Hey everybody, God TV family. Um, it's Ron Cantor. Uh, I am in Israel right now. It's where we live. As many of you know, I'm the regional director for God TV here, as well as the president of Shalano TV, our 24-7 Hebrew language um, digital gospel channel. Um, but it's kind of a heavy time here in Israel. We appear to be in the middle of a war. Um, last night, as many of you know, 130 rockets were fired upon Tel Aviv. Uh, that was following Israel striking in uh, Gaza, taking down an apartment building, which was in response to Hamas killing a elderly woman and her caretaker yesterday afternoon. And all of it is connected to um, some unfortunate incidents uh, in a neighborhood in Jerusalem. It's a long story, I won't go into all that, uh, other than to say that um, our government could have done a better job of quelling down some of the issues in Jerusalem early on. But right now it's out of hand because Hamas is always looking for an opportunity, an excuse to start a war because their goal, they just want to look big in the eyes of their constituents. They were in the middle of elections that got canceled because they were going to win, so they were canceled. And um, we have a resource called the 15 Most Important Facts that you need to know about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I'm going to get our team to post that here so you can read that. It's a, it's a graphical, very short read that goes through the history of the conflict. And people who read it seem to find it very, very helpful. But last night, 130 rockets, that's unprecedented. It's never happened on Tel Aviv. Um, and of course, Israel responded throughout the night. Six Hamas commanders uh, were killed. And then now here we are again this evening. There's more rocket fire into Ashkelon. My wife is from Ashkelon. My mother-in-law is right now in Ashkelon. In fact, her last night, her, the place where she sits, she can no longer walk. And she goes downstairs and she sits in um, on a bench uh, 20 meters from there was a direct hit. Um, she could have been hit. She could have been hit by shrapnel. Um, it's a pretty intense time. Normally, it's the chances with the Iron Dome. Thank God for the Iron Dome. If we didn't have the Iron Dome, last night would have been, um, I, I'm afraid to think. Uh, it would have been a, a, an incredible tragedy. And there would have been uh, probably dozens, if not more, killed. Um, there's a video going around. We made it, I think we put it on God TV yesterday, um, but of uh, the Iron Dome working last night when this barrage came. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to overwhelm the Iron Dome. So you send 130 missiles in a very short uh, time frame and hoping that you can overwhelm the Iron Dome. Fortunately, it worked unbelievably. Uh, I think 90% and you can see it just they're just going up one right after another and taking out these missiles that that are coming in and i've heard i've heard people say it's not fair that you have the iron dome um well it's not fair that they're sending rockets it's not fair that they're terrorists it's not about fair um we're just we're trying to live our lives here uh when my wife was a kid when she was seven eight years old her father used to take her from ashkelon into gaza to go vegetable shopping. And everybody was friendly. The Arabs were friendly. The Jews were friendly. There was commerce, e the economy. It was great. They were blessed. Because before that, before 1967, Gaza was under Egyptian control and they ran it like a prison. And when Israel won the Six Day War, it was like liberation for the Arabs of Gaza. Did you know that? Until Arafat and the PLO came in. And, um, that kind of messed things up. And so it, uh, we're, we're in the situation we have today where Hamas, they're not good people. They're not, they're not humanitarians. They don't care for the people of Gaza. It does not bother them. If an, if an Israeli retaliation kills a, a woman or a child, not only does that not bother them, they are excited and they use it as propaganda. Not only that, but they'll take women and children and they'll actually put them close to rocket launchers hoping that when we take out the rocket launcher, we might kill a woman or a child, and then they can feign outrage. 
Now listen, I am not saying that we're perfect here in Israel. We're not a perfect nation uh, by any means, but we're a humane nation. We don't want war. We don't, we, we have some extreme elements within our nation, but the difference is this, is that they're 1% or less and the rest of the nation rejects them. The rest of the nation is disgusted by them. Sadly, in Gaza, Hamas is celebrated, even though they're the, they're the nightmare of the people. But the people are afraid. And if elections were held in, uh, where are we, May? I think it was late April they were supposed to be held. They were canceled. Hamas was expected to win in a landslide. So you have the people voting for a terrorist organization to remain in power. Now, if they lost, they're not going to relinquish power. You know, they're, they're dictators, they're terrorists. Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, ISIS type. Little difference in ideology, theology, but at the end of the day, they are bloodthirsty. No problem killing Jews. No problem killing Arabs. It's not uncommon for a suspected collaborator in Gaza to, ha to be beheaded without a trial and then to drag their headless bodies through the streets on motorcycles. That's normal. So I'm asking you to pray for us. I, I have a heart for these people. I have a heart for the Arabs of Gaza. I think given, you know, there's a reason that Arabs in America do not, for the most part, carry out terror attacks. Muslims in America don't carry out terrorist attack for the most part. Why? Economic freedom. For the most part, that's what most people want is economic freedom. Let me just have a job. And I don't have any, I don't have any doubt if, that, if there was a responsible government in the West Bank, in Gaza, that you would see minimal terrorism. But as long as you've got Fatah, the PLO, in uh, the West Bank, oppressive corrupt dictators, stealing, robbing the people blind. Did you know Yasser Arafat died with a billion dollars in his bank account? Now, he wasn't a businessman. That's money that he stole from the Palestinian people. And that's what the other leaders of the PLO are doing as well. And then you have Hamas in Gaza, a terrorist organization. And so we find ourselves in this situation again. We were on the verge of a new government um, yesterday, actually, um, but this was going to be the first government in the history of Israel that would have had Arab representation. Ironically, the five Arab seats that were going to come into the government are part of a uh, Islamic party, the Ram party. Now you say, why would an Islamic party join in a Jewish dominated Israeli government? Because the leader of this party, also named uh, Abbas, Mansour Abbas, he realized that just fighting for the rights of Palestinians and being angry and it hadn't gotten them anything. And he said, I think I need to fight for the, my own people. There's horrible organized crime in uh, many of the Arab cities in Israel. And he wanted to get more police protection, better economy. Um, he was ready to join a government with the Air Lapid and Naftali Bennett and, and others. And of course, now with in the midst of the war, it didn't happen. It still might. Who, you know, to man, you know, man has the plans of the heart, but God decides uh, to paraphrase of Proverbs 16. So right now in Ashkelon, just a few minutes ago, I just heard that there was another bombing. I guess I should have started with that. Um, uh, 20 people have been injured. Some are saying that the Iron Dome is not working in Ashkelon. I, I don't know if that's true. You get so many stories. I don't know. But pray right now for Ashkelon. Ashkelon is just 10 miles north of Gaza. So they only have about 10, uh, 15 to 20 seconds from the time they hear a siren to get to shelter. And again, if you're old like my mother-in-law, there's nowhere to go. If you, can't, if, if you have a walker or a wheelchair, that's why this woman and her caretaker were killed yesterday. They, could, they didn't have time. And, and, and Ashkelon is a large city and it's very close. And that's why they're targeting it. And if it's true that the Iron Dome is down, well, we just need to pray. Father, we pray right now for the people of Ashkelon, that you would protect them right now. Beyond the Iron Dome, I pray that you would be the Kipat Barzel, the Iron Dome, that, that, that protective cover. 
Hallelujah. In Yeshua's name, we did a word study on the true meaning of the word Pesach, Passover. Uh, if, you, if you go and see my video on that, we'll try and get it posted here. But I don't believe it means Passover. It was the angel of death who passed over. The angel of death who, and it would be a different word in Hebrew for, to, to pass over. Long story short, I believe that the word Pesach or Poseach uh, means to hover over and protect from the angel of death. So what God did is he was that Kipat Barzel. He was the Iron Dome in Egypt as the angel and death passed over the homes. God protected under his wings. So God, right now we ask that you would leave uh, Soach, that you would... Um, that you would hover over Ashkelon, over Sderot, over Tel Aviv, over Jerusalem, over all the cities of Israel. Shomer Yisrael, the keeper of Israel. He who watches over Israel neither slumbers or sleeps, the Bible says. So God, we pray right now in Yeshua's name, be that Shomer, be that, that watcher, keeper, guarder. In the name of Yeshua, we're asking you, Lord, Guard over Israel. And God, I do pray. I pray for the people of Gaza. I pray for the Arabs in the West Bank. God, that you would give them the freedom that they long for. That they would no longer be governed by a dictatorship, by a fanatical Islamic leadership. That they would have freedom. Freedom of movement. Freedom of commerce. That you would set them free from the hate, oh God, and the lies. When they think about Jewish people, when they're taught that we're bloodthirsty, that we want to hurt them, that we want to do unspeakable things. And Lord, it's all propaganda and it's lies meant to turn their children against us. So we pray for them too. We love them. They need Yeshua. God, I pray for Israel, for Gaza, for the West Bank, that you would send revival. Agree with me. Come on, 172 people, agree with me. We need an awakening in Israel. That's what we need. We don't need just a, a kippah barzel, an iron dome. We need the Holy Spirit to descend on this nation, on every corner, every crevice of this nation, to descend and bring a move of God. That's what we need. That's what we're hungry for. So I'm asking you right now, agree with me in the name of Yeshua for revival. You know, uh, in the past month, we invested a sizable amount of money. I told our station manager, Evan, I said, I'm, I gave him $5,000. I said, I want you to invest this in Shilano TV and social media so we can reach more people. In two weeks, according to Facebook, we reached, I don't know what that means exactly, I don't know if it means they saw a video. I don't know if it means it showed up in their timeline. But we reached, according to Facebook, 260,000 Israelis in two weeks. If we kept that pace up, we could reach every person in this nation who's on Facebook within a year. That's what we want to do. We want to reach Israel. My friend, Eitan Bar, just debated in Hebrew, one for Israel. You might be familiar with them. Debated in Hebrew, a rabbi. It was, it was on social media, and it, made, it was a big uproar. Pray for our nation. Pray for our people. Pray that their eyes would be open. The Bible speaks of a time when when all Israel will be saved, Romans eleven twenty six, And I don't believe it's going to happen without you, without believers from all over the world praying in agreement. There's something, you know, when we say things like, God needs you, I've, I've been criticized. God doesn't need anyone. Of course he doesn't. Of course he doesn't. We understand that. God is sovereign. God can do what he wants when he wants to do it. But he has set it up where we are co-laborers with him, where we agree with him in prayer. If God doesn't need us or he hasn't set it up this way, then why do we pray at all? So again, God doesn't have needs. He doesn't need us, but he has set it up for us to co-labor in intercession with Yeshua, who's at the right hand of God, whoever maketh intercession for us. And the same Jesus who wept over Jerusalem is weeping over Israel now. The same Paul who prophesied God's heart in Romans 9 when he said, I would go to hell if only my people, the people of Israel, would believe he said they're, they're, they're the logical ones who should believe. They have the covenants. They have Moses. They have the tablets. They have the law. 
the Chagim, the Moedim, the, 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 the biblical feast days. They're the logical ones to believe. And he said, I would trade my salvation if only they could know Messiah. Can we enter into that heart of intercession with Paul, our forefather, and with Yeshua, our Messiah, who wept over the city of Jerusalem, who, who, who loves this nation, and he loves every nation. But the key to world revival, Romans 11, verse 12, in verse 15, the key to the greater riches revival is revival here. So even as rockets are falling, even as people are r running for their lives, may they call out to God. Could you, can you agree with me? May they call out to the one who loves them. May in the nighttime, Yeshua be revealed to them. Let's believe for that. Come on, friends. The Lord is looking to you right now. Again, if God didn't set it up this way, then why do we even pray at all? It's because he, set, he has set it up this way. And remember, it's the Jewish people. They were the rule.